Welcome back to All In, where we shine light on artificial intelligence and the impact of technology on our everyday lives. Today, we have Dr. Candace Steele Flippin, an expert in the communication field, and she has written several books about the workforce gap and generational gaps in the workplace. Dr. Candace, how are you doing? Hey, Patrick. I'm so glad to be here today. I appreciate you coming on the show. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Candace. I started my career working in communications because I really wanted to make sure that we were communicating effectively. And over the past 15 years, I started to notice how generational values were shifting how we relate to one another in the workplace. We spend as adults 70% of our time in communication. So I view it as a bridge. And as more generations come into the workplace, I want to make sure that they cross that bridge effectively. In October 2022, I met Dr. Candace at an event at Clark Atlanta University. We were presenting to a group of students on the future of the workforce and what skill sets they need to be prepared. And ever since then, I've been intrigued by Dr. Candace. I've stayed in touch with her and her and I always communicate and talk about things. So, Dr. Candace, tell me about artificial intelligence. And since you're in the field of communications, how do you think the invention or the progression of artificial intelligence will impact that field? Well, from a communications perspective, you know, we have to stay current. And any time that we see, you know, innovations in te technology, in particular, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning um, that can simulate, you know, human understanding, it, it's wonderful. I've had lots of conversations with other leaders in communications as well as students. And I believe that artificial intelligence or AI actually has great benefit to our profession. I've heard, and I've even in my own um, practice, you know, it's great for ideation. It's great for, you know, co-piloting as we all experience for those of us who are using um, Word or if you're texting. So the ability in the sense of generative AI to anticipate, you know, what may come next, you know, I believe it will be ubiquitous in a few years. Um, so I see it as very helpful. It also has the ability to be misused. And so it's important for us to come up with frameworks to make sure that in, in the case, let's say generative AI, that there's the, the proper disclosures in place, or if people are using other features to make sure they're not um, victims of fraud, and then making sure we understand who owns that intellectual property. But for the most part, I consider it um, a game changer and very important and will be ubiquitous in a couple of years um, for those of of us in our profession. Well, you were mentioned earlier, you talked to some executives and some high ranking people. What concerns had they brought to you about artificial intelligence, particularly in the communications field and how also will it impact the workforce gap that we currently have? Many of my peers and I talk about um, security and privacy issues in terms of making sure if you're using an AI tool or artificial intelligence tool that you're not putting confidential or proprietary information um, in these types of tools if you don't have a arrangement where you have it carved off in a sandbox. So that's one. Another issue we've talked about has to do with um, privacy concerns and particularly intellectual property. And so if you want to protect your content or protect your ideas, you want to make sure that you have proper governance and training in place so that your associates or employees are not putting confidential information from your organization in one of these tools that work can be searchable. So those are some of the things where we talk about. Also, we want to make sure that, you know, it's not being abused. We've seen across the landscape, lots of, you know, cyber, unfortunate, you know, cyber um, vulnerabilities. And we want to make sure that someone's not using these tools to, um, you know, trick our employees into disclosing information. So those are some of the things. And then I would just say, making sure that we understand the potential so there's the appropriate training depending on the type of work that's being done. You know, I've done extensive research and I continue to research artificial yeah. intelligence and its impact on the Black community and females. You're a successful female yourself. You traveled around and as I mentioned earlier, you have written several books. What are some of the concerns you have noticed in the Black community about artificial intelligence and how it can impact us? I have found that there is a very high familiarity of AI with Black women. I did a recent poll and it turns out that 
you know, compared to, let's just say, white women, black women had a 75% from familiarity with AI, whereas um, white women, it was 62%. So, you know, so my concern, as we've talked about, is more curiosity. You know, how aware are we? So that's great. So I, I believe that we will continue as black women to elevate. What I'm concerned about is that people mm-hmm. will believe that we're behind the eight ball when my research is showing we're actually, we're actually mm-hmm. quite relevant and quite current. The other thing that um, I was curious about is whether or not we're going to be ready. You know, you and I have talked extensively about the concern um, Mm -hmm. in the marketplace that we will continue to be employable. And here's what I found, Patrick. Turns out that when I ask a question, you know, do you believe that your role or your profession or your job will be eliminated completely by AI? And if so, when do you think it will happen? And I won't get into all the data point, which I'll be publishing, but here's something I found curious. One of the questions was my role will never be eliminated by AI. And about 34% of the black women in the sample said that they're safe. 56% of white women believe that their jobs will never be eliminated. For the most part, we are thinking about the implications of AI. What are some things you have used artificial intelligence for? Well, first and foremost, I was curious about it. So, you know, I consider myself an early adopter in terms of, um, you know, new technologies and um, tools. And so when I first heard about on chat GPT, I instantly logged on. In fact, I was speaking mm. with um, one of my colleagues um, yesterday and she was like, I can't get in. And then when Bard was first <laughs> out, I, I signed mm-hmm. up. I was curious about it. And so how I've used it, it interestingly, you know, from ideation, I've, I, you know, I've tested it just to understand if, mm-hmm. if I'm seen bias. Um, I've used it for like proofreading. I've used it to analyze um, diff- you know, co- content. So I've, I've found it very, um, very compelling. I've recently started experimenting mm-hmm. with the analyze features. Mm-hmm. I haven't used it as much um, for um, for some of the you know generating you know, generating images. But you know, I, I try to test and learn and and and. and and, um, you know, so far I'm encouraged and impressed by what I see. And then as many of us, you know, it's being used to co-pilot, like I mentioned, like in, in um, Word or in text. So it's happening um, mm-hmm. a, a lot anyway, to, particularly from a generative perspective. 